Hi, it's Jamie from Galebrook Farm, where we take you along on a journey to become more self-reliant. This is our off-grid cooking series, and we are going to roast some green coffee beans. So why do you want to learn to roast your own green coffee beans? Well, for one, the taste is completely different. Uh, it's like buying already roasted nuts that have been sitting on a grocery store shelf for six months, as opposed to roasting them yourself in the oven. It just completely tastes different. It, and once you try it, you won't go back. Uh, the other reason is for those of us who are prepping and storing long term, green coffee beans such as these uh, tend to store a lot longer than something you buy that's already roasted uh, such as these. Now these uh, are whole coffee beans and these will last somewhere around six to eight months is the expiration date before they start to go stale. Ground coffee lasts even less, but green coffee pe beans, if stored properly, such as in mylar bags, and I'll leave a link up above if you guys are interested in how to store mylar bags, supposedly these will store for 20 years or more. Now, of course, we don't have any experience in this. We are just starting our green bean coffee roasting journey. Uh, but those of you guys out there who have stored green coffee beans for a long time, leave your comments down below, down below and let us know how they store for you. So for now, uh, we have only roasted two pounds of these so far. So we are just starting to learn how to roast green coffee beans and I'm gonna share with you guys how to do it. All right, so what do you need to roast green coffee beans other than the beans? Well, you need some sort of burner. Now, uh, you can do this on your stove top, but if you're off grid, you might wanna use something like a propane burner. We have a Camp Chef 2 propane burner here, and you need some sort of pot to roast them in. Uh, now, there are a lot of different fancy ways to roast coffee, but at the most basic level, you just need a pot. Uh, this is what we did our first two pounds in, and we roasted them just like we, we cooked popcorn. We put about uh, half a pound in here and just kept shaking them and shaking them and shaking them until they got to the right level of roastiness that we had wanted. And, uh, and that worked just fine. The only problem is, is that when you're shaking them, they don't get evenly toasted. So then we went over to this. Now this is just a whirly pop, uh, popcorn popper. And the reason that we went with this is because if you, if you look inside, it has these wires that will turn the beans constantly. So it'll give you a more even roast. Now these things aren't expensive. So that's why we went with one of these, uh, just to have the even roast. And honestly, uh, after trying our own roasted green coffee, we will probably never ever go back to buying pre-roasted coffee again. It, it really is that much better. So let's get started. We're gonna get this thing lit and I'm gonna show you how to roast some coffee. So this particular propane burner is about 30, puts out about 30,000 BTUs. It's pretty powerful propane burner. It's gonna be great for canning, uh, but for roasting beans, we do not need to have this burner on all the way. So I'm gonna turn this down to medium low. And that's what we're gonna roast our beans on because we don't wanna burn them. Now, where to get green coffee beans? Uh, there are a bunch of different places online, but the one place that we order from is Sweet Maria's. They have a really good variety of, of green coffee there, and they have so much of a variety that you're gonna have a hard time picking out which one to try. So what we went with was the sample pack, and they have uh, four pound and eight pound sample packs where they will uh, send you just a variety of different coffee. And we have, uh, we're on our second sample pack here, and this is our second four pack of samples. And we have four different types of coffee here. I think we're gonna probably try this Costa Rica. Now you notice the green coffee is a lot smaller than regular coffee beans. It's going to expand whenever it cooks. Now as you turn the knob, you can see that the coffee is rotating in there. We're gonna keep the lid shut. And in the beginning, we're just going to turn it every few minutes. It's gonna take about seven minutes or so before we start hearing what's called the first crack. Uh, now the first crack is what um, some people call a light roast or a city roast. You'll hear like an audible crack, almost like popcorn, uh, like a real soft popcorn. And then you know that that is the earliest you can take off your beans. And when you look at them, you can see that they're a light brown. After that, they're just gonna to continue to darken really, really quickly. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't stop turning. Uh, and you can take them off at any point after that first crack. And then it, you'll start to hear a second crack. After the second crack, they are about ready to burn. That's when you get into a really dark roast. 
and uh, you want to make sure you get them off really quickly after that. Uh, what I like to do, um, or what I've learned to do when trying a new roast out, is to take it off in three different stages. So I'll take one off around the uh, light roast phase, I'll take one off when it's a little bit darker, and then I'll take one off when it's a little bit darker, and I'll have three batches, and then I can taste what this coffee tastes like uh, with three different uh, toasting levels. Now I'm going to turn this heat down just a little bit because they seem to be getting brown pretty darn quick. I also want to note that um, most people recommend only roasting a half a pound at a time, uh, especially in the whirly pop, just because it, it gives a more even um, browning to the beans. But we go through a pound of coffee a week, so rather than me roasting twice a week or twice in one day, uh, I just throw the whole pound in there. But if you want to know how to do it the right way, maybe just start with a half a pound. I am sweating. It's like 88 degrees out with the humidity of uh, close to 80%. It has been crazy humid the last couple days with all the hurricanes. And then standing over the propane burner, it's a little warm. That's another thing too. When you're roasting coffee beans, uh, you want to do them outside if at all possible. This is going to start to smoke and um, it also blows off chafe and that's not something that you're going to want in your house. All right, you'll notice that the beans are starting to get a little bit brown. From now on, you want to make sure you don't stop turning, otherwise they're going to burn. So keep turning if, you're, if you have a whirly pop and if you have um, a regular pot that you're using, make sure you keep shaking it at this point. All right, now we're listening for that first crack. Should come up here in the next couple minutes. All right, so we're gonna take off our first batch. And we're dumping them on a tray to quickly cool. And we're gonna put the second, we're gonna put it back on again and get a little bit darker roast. All right, so here is like a little bit darker roast. We'll just dump a little bit more in. And now we'll leave these to do a darker roast. Now these as these continue to cook, they're gonna release more oils. So you can tell from the surface of the bean that it gets a little bit shinier as it releases more oils. It's starting to smell more like coffee. You can see how much smoke's coming off of this. This is why you wanna do this outdoors. Especially the darker the roast, the more smoke you're gonna have. It smells pretty strong. I don't know if you can hear this, but we just hit second crack. So I don't know if you can hear this, but it sounds like popcorn now. It's uh, cracking pretty loudly. We're at second crack. And now's the time we wanna get this off. If you go much beyond second crack, can you hear it? Uh, that's when it's gonna burn. So we're gonna quickly cool this down. All right, so you can see we did a light roast, a medium roast, and a dark roast. Now, each roasting level is going to taste different. Uh, any of you guys that really are into coffee know that different flavors come out at different levels. Uh, so when you're first starting off roasting your own coffee, you might wanna do it this way and just kind of sample what the light tastes like, the medium and the dark, and see what your preference is. We obviously prefer the uh, medium to dark roast more, which is why I made most of mine dark um, and these are just more for example to show you guys this is how uh, we started off doing it so that we didn't jump right in and burn the whole batch and we could taste it at the different at the different levels um, of roastiness so once you get these all dumped out you're going to want them on a tray to cool and i don't know if you can see this but these beans have some chafe on them 
So putting them outside uh, and allowing the wind to blow that chafe off is, is going to get rid of that from your beans. It's not, it's not gonna hurt them if you grind them up, but you, know, you wanna get it out of there if you can. Now, these should technically sit and off gas for about 24 to 36 hours before you use the beans. Um, that's when they hit their peak in flavor profile. But once they cool, you can go ahead and make a cup and we're gonna make a cup here uh, in a few minutes uh, once these cool down so where I can touch them and we're gonna show you how we do our coffee off grid. All right, now I'm gonna show you how we make our coffee. So we have our propane on, we're gonna stick our pot on and we're making two cups of coffee, so we need about two cups of water. It's actually more than that because some of it's going to um, evaporate as it boils. So we'll just dump that in and get that going. And then we're gonna grind our coffee. Now this is uh, an old fashioned um, hand coffee grinder. We got it from an antique store. It's probably from the 50s, I think. Um, but you can also order brand new ones online. They're usually around $80, but ones at antique stores, I think I got this for 15 bucks or 10 bucks. And all you do is you put your coffee, gr your coffee beans in here, and then you turn the crank and grind them. And then they are, all your grinds are in this little drawer. So it's four tablespoons because we're making two cups of coffee. Close the door. It's easier to do this on a tabletop. We're just gonna go over on the table. It's a lot easier. All right, then we're gonna pour our coffee grounds in a French press. For those of you guys that don't know what a French press is, you basically just pour your coffee grounds in there and then you pour water on top. This sits on top, you let it sit for maybe about seven minutes, and you push the plunger down. When you do that, all the coffee grounds are pushed to the bottom and then you can just pour out your cup of coffee. And supposedly there is added health benefits because you are actually using the whole bean in there and rather than just steeping it through, but uh, I'll leave the experts to comment on that. The other thing when using a French press is make sure you look inside and there's no bugs in there because the one time, it was early morning and it was really dark and I made Jeremy and I a cup of coffee and I was drinking it and it tasted really weird. Turned out that there was a stink bug that I boiled inside my coffee and I was drinking it and yeah, don't do that. Just check first. Coffee also tastes a hundred times better in a French press than it does in anything else that we've ever made before either. All right, our coffee is boiling. We're just gonna pour it in the French press. We'll put the lid on with the arrow pointing forward. And we're gonna let it sit for about seven minutes. It's been about seven minutes. Push the plunger down and just pour the coffee. Mm. It's pretty good coffee. All right, so I'm gonna answer a few questions that I know a couple people are gonna ask. One, with the Whirly Pop, you'll notice that I left the lid open. That was for demonstration purposes only, uh, just, to guide, just to show you guys the beans changing color, but you should keep the lid closed and then just check on it periodically and that'll help it to, um, to roast a lot faster. The other thing is you do not have to do the three different roasts. If you already know exactly what roast you want, go ahead and uh, just roast it to that level. I just recommend it, that if you're just getting started so you can taste it at the three different levels and see which one you prefer. And also if you guys are interested in uh, sampling any, uh, any green coffee and uh, if you guys want to try this yourself, uh, we did get with uh, Sweet Maria's and they gave us a coupon. So I'm going to leave that down below in the description. Uh, what I would recommend doing is getting the sample pack. That's what we got. And they will just pick um, 
either four pounds or eight pounds, whatever you choose of different coffees that they are uh, producing at that particular time. So you get to try different ones and see which one you like. And I can honestly say that I haven't tried one yet that I don't like, because so I like them all. And then once you know which one you like, then you can go back and order in bulk and um, then you can go ahead and store them in Mylar bags or store them in your basement. And that leads me to the next question. I know someone's gonna ask, how long do they store if you don't put them in Mylar? And they should last about uh, six months to a year if you do not put them in Mylar. So uh, again, we are not the experts on making coffee. This is only our third time doing it. And we just wanted to take you guys along on our journey as we are learning new things. Uh, so if you guys have been roasting coffee for a while and you guys have any tips or tricks, leave them down below. And if you guys have any questions, leave those below. We'll try and get to them as best we can. If you guys like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe. We have more videos coming out on off-grid cooking and a bunch of other topics. So uh, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Good stuff. Santa just arrived. Look at all this awesome stuff. Wow. We're going off grid. We're like the off grid ninja now. Uh, I'm go that far. <laughs> I don't know how to put this thing together. <laughs>